Okay. Let's uh, close our eyes. And once again, we will pray. Let's pray. We thank you, Father, for another wonderful day. Speak to us. Encounter us. Open up our eyes and ears to see you, to know you, to experience you. Let your glory be shown. Your glory alone be shown. Sa oras na ito. This is what we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Mm. Ayan yung nangyari kanina umaga. Yung mga nandito kanina umaga, alam nyo yun, yung mga wala kanina umaga, ayan, ayan yung nangyari kanina. Hindi na-preach yung preaching ni Pastor, Ginamit lang ni Pastor yung isang slide lang na to. And yun din yung gagawin natin. Kasi sa next, sa susunod na linggo, ipipreach ni Pastor yung buo. So, tingnan natin kung magagawa ko rin. Okay. Uh, alam nyo naman, na, naalala nyo ba kung ano yung magiging message today? Nalala niyo yung to be continued, ano yung to be continued? True blessing, di ba? So, um, true blessing yung subtitle. Ang title natin, empty pa rin. Uh, pero syempre, hindi pinreach ni Pastor yung buong message niya. So, portion lang yung titignan natin. So firstly, tingnan natin to, Luke 15, and yan yung tungkol sa prodigal son na alam na alam natin, na very familiar tayo. Uh, and sa previous verse, makikita kung ano yung nangyari kay Bunso, kay prodigal son, bago siya nag come to his sense. So, kung babasahin uh, sa 14, may famine, and na ubus niya yung lahat ng kinuha niya. Uh, so, ang ginawa niya, kumain na lang siya ng pagkain ng baboy. And naisip niya, yung alipin sa bahay ng, yung mga alipin sa bahay ng kanyang ama, mas okay pa yung buhay kaysa sa akin. So, and then, nag-come to his sense siya and bumalik siya sa kanyang ama. So, come to his sense. Ito yung word, uh, ah, ito yung phrase na familiar din tayo and yan, dyan tayo mag-focus today. Ah, uh, Merong tanong tungkol dito. So, first question. Alam kaya ng ama na nahihirapan yung kanyang anak? Sa so, tingin nyo. Umalis yung kanyang anak, kinuha niya yung mamanahin niya, umalis siya. Alam kaya ng ama na maghihirap at naghihirap siya sa mga oras 
na yon na wala siya sa bahay. Alam kaya ng ama. Sa tingin nyo. Masasabi natin alam ng ama. Bakit? Dahil uh, yung panganay, sinabi ng panganay, yung anak, yung, pang, yung kapatid ko nga, inubos niya lahat ng pera niya, inubos niya sa mga prostitutes, tapos wala na siya makain, ayan yung ginawa niya, kinain niya yung mga pagkain ng baboy. So, nung bumalik siya, naghanda ka pa ng party para sa kanya. So, doon natin malalaman, alam na ng ama na naghihirap yung anak, yung bunso. Na naghihirap yung bunso, alam din ng ama na maghihirap yung bunso. Bakit? Mamaya, titingnan natin. Second question. Kung alam ng ama na naghihirap yung kanyang anak, bakit hindi niya pinuntahan? Di ba, usually, Uh, commonly may sa pamilya natin alam mong pag dyan siya dumaan may mamimit siyang uh, hold upper may nasagap kang uh, news na may hold upper dun sa kanto na yon e eh, alam mong yung kapatid mo Doon dadaan. Anong gagawin mo? Sasabihan mo. And, pipigilan mo na dumaan doon. Same question. Alam ng ama na maghihirap yung kanyang anak, bakit hinayaan? Bakit hindi pinuntahan yung anak at pinigilan o kaya pinabalik na agad bago pa siya maghirap? Bakit? May purpose. May purpose naman lahat. And yung purpose na yun, connected din sa kung bakit alam ng ama, pero hinayaan. Yung tanong dyan sa why father did not go to his son, masasagot natin yan sa tanong na to. Bakit kinailangan pa maghintay ang ama na yung kanyang anak, yung bunsong anak, ay mag-come to his sense pa. Diyan natin masasagot. Bakit? Anyone na may idea? So first question, alam ba ng ama na maghihirap yung kanyang anak? Oo. Eh bakit hindi niya pinuntahan? Bakit hindi niya pinigilan? May sagot na ba tayo? Wala pa. So, hahanap tayo ng sagot nun sa tanong na to. Bakit kinailangan pa maghintay yung ama na mag-come to his sense siya, yung anak niya, para bumalik? Bakit? Alam na nga niya na maghihirap. Bakit hindi na lang niya puntahan? Bakit kailangan niya pang hintayin na mag-come to his sense siya at bumalik? Ang sagot, first time lang natin maririnig to. Burn the bridge. Anong kinata nyo kanina? I pay my vows, no turning around. I burn the bridge. Uh, ano bang ibig sabihin ng burn the bridge? San kinuha yan? Ayan. 1 Kings 19, verse 20. Ayan yung kwento tungkol kay Elijah and Elisha. Sino yung, sino yung uh, teacher? Sino yung, sino yung teacher? Sino yung student? Elijah. Student yung Elisha. Nalilito pa rin ako sa Tagalog. Yung Eliseo, e, Eli, ano yun? E, e, Elias, Eliseo. Nalilito pa rin ako sino si Elias, sino si Eliseo. Anyway, English na lang ako. Elijah yung teacher. Elisha yung student. Ngayon, nung nakita ni Elisha, ay, ito yung gusto kong teacher. Gusto kong maging katulad niya. Gusto kong sumunod sa kanya. Makikita natin kung ano yung ginawa niya. Pwede ba natin basahin ng sabay-sabay verse 21? So, Elisha left. Ready? Get set? Go. So, Elisha left. Verse 
he burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it and they ate then Elijah and became his servant four were oh no 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 four parts ng verse na to naka red slaughtered burned set out to follow became his servants hmm Paano ka magiging servant? Medyo magba-backwards tayo. Paano ka magiging servant ng isang master? Kailangan mong mag-follow. Kailangan mong sumunod. Diba? Hindi naman pwedeng papunta na sa Manila yung master mo. Eh, andito ka pa rin. Paano, paano, what do you expect? Pa, paano ka mag expect na maging servant ka ng master mo? So, follow. Siyempre, hindi lang physically follow, gagayahin mo din. Kung ano yung ginagawa, ginagawa niya, gagawin mo din. Kung ano yung tinuturo niya, gagawin mo din. Pero mas mahalaga pa doon, slaughtered and burned. Alam ko, may idea na kayo nung nabasa niyo yan. How many of us na nakapag-burn na ng bridge. Bakit yung ginawa yun? Common sense lang maintindihan natin. Nung nalaman ni Elisha na si Elijah yung gusto niya na maging teacher, Elisha left him and went back. So, andito si Elijah, oh, dyan ka lang, dyan ka lang. Bumalik siya sa bahay. Anong ginawa niya? Bakit siya nagmandaling bumalik sa bahay? He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. Yung, yung ganon, yung kahoy na nandun sa, diba? Sa baka. Yung panghatak. Tinanggal niya. Bakit niya tinanggal? Para patayin yung, yung baka. Kasi, makikita natin, uh, papakain niya sa mga tao. Eh, yun lang yung source of income niya. Pero, yun yung agad na naisip niya. Papatayin ko to, papakain ko sa mga tao, papatayin ko, pero paano ko lulutuin? Walang panggatong. So, ang ginawa niya? Yung yoke, he burned. Plowing equipment, he burned. Bakit? To cook the meat. ba? Diba? Tama? Pinatay niya yung ox, tapos lahat ng gamit niya pang, kasi magsasaka siya, lahat ng gamit niya na yon ginawa niyang pang gatong. Tapos gumawa siya ng apoy, yung pinatay niya ox, niluto niya. And then, gave it to the people to let them eat. Pinakain niya lahat. And then, ano ginawa niya? Then, he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. Fourth, fourth week na. For four weeks, we are talking about MT. Ano yung MT? Uh, valueless and unreal. Last week, sinabi ko, alam natin dust tayo, pero hindi pa natin nakokonek sa unreal and valueless, which is MT. Ngayon, i-coconnect pa natin sa burn. How many of us nakapag-burn na ng pinakamahalagang bagay sa buhay natin? Yung only source of income, only source of uh, of sustaining my life, physical body, have you burned? Anong ibig sabihin nun? na surrender mo ba? Eh, hindi natin nire-require sa lahat ng mga Christians na oh, sunugin mo yung pera mo, sunugin mo yung, oh, punta ka sa kumpanya mo, sunugin mo yung kumpanya na yun. Ha? Hindi yun. Hindi sinasabing sunugin mo lahat ng gamit mo, sapatos mo, cellphone mo, yung bahay mo. Hindi naman yun. Ay, gusto mong makulong? Hindi yun. What does burn down mean? Na-acknowledge mo ba? Lahat ng to ang Diyos may ari. 
Actually, ganyan dapat yung kailangan natin gawin. Kung talagang gusto mong sumunod sa Diyos, gusto mo siya yung maging master, maging Lord, maging curious mo. Ano ibig sabihin ng curious? Someone practicing ownership. ba? Diba? Kung talagang ina-acknowledge mo ang Diyos na curious mo na may are ownership ng lahat ng meron ako, then we should burn down. Why? Para wala na tayong babalikan. Alam ni Elisha, alam ni Elisha, gusto niyang sumunod kay Elijah, pero siguradong darating yung time, kasi tao siya, siguradong darating yung time na mahihirapan siya, or siguradong darating yung time na medyo magkakaroon ng misunderstanding sa pagitan nila, siguro, eto guess ko lang to personal guess ko lang to siguro dahil doon sabi niya kahit mangyari to kahit mangyari to ayokong maglagay ng option ng chance na bumalik pa ako doon kasi i have chosen to follow him to be his servant how many of us na nakagawa na noon ah uh, ito yung ito yung mahirap Uh, especially sa pagiging isang uh, kung yung kung yung vision mo uh, let's say uh, ano bang other word ng vision kung yung gusto mong maging iba-iba yung ano natin plans in life merong mga gustong maging doktor merong mga gustong maging nurse merong mga gustong maging uh, businessman hindi ko alam yon. Ito lang yung alam ko. Yung tungkol sa mga gustong maging pastor or missionary. Ang daming beses, gusto kong bumalik. Ang daming beses, kasi naranasan kong magtrabaho at sumahod ng malaki. Ang daming beses kong naisip, gusto kong bumalik. Gusto kong magtrabaho na lang. Since 2016, sinabi ko, kasi bumalik, pumunta ako ng Korea sa TCC. You know, uh, hindi ordain eh, ang tawag doon? Commissioning. Si isesend ng TCC as their missionary. Simula noon, sabi ko hindi na ako magtatrabaho. Hindi na ako maghanap ng job for my income. Sabi ko, siya na bahala. Uh, hindi man ganun ka matured yung isip ko tungkol doon. Pero yun yung sinabi ko. Pero ang daming beses, simula no ang daming beses na nangyari, gusto kong bumalik. Kasi alam ko, makakabalik ako, makakahanap ako ng trabaho, and alam ko, makakaipon ako ng, makakasahod ako ng malaki. Alam ko yung mga kakayahan ko, alam ko yung skill na meron ako, especially yung bilingual. Yun yung gustong i-burn ng Diyos sa buhay natin. Yung option, yung mga option mo na gusto mong balikan pag nahihirapan ka. Kasi reality ito eh, di ba? Practical na bagay yung, yung buhay natin ngayon eh. Kailangan may makain tayo. Kailangan may masuot tayo. Okay lang yung cellphone. Eh. Hindi naman ganun kahalaga yon Pero paano mo bubuhayin yung pamilya mo? Di ba? So, when you have chosen to follow God as being missionary or pastor, alam mong wala kang makukuhang income, lalo na kung yung church na pinaglilingkuran mo, eh, walang offering na lumalabas. Example lang naman to, ah. Hindi ko sinasabing ganito yung church natin. Example, pastor ka sa isang church and yung mga members mo doon, mahirap talaga. 19, uh, early, uh, late 90s, di ba? Itong pabahay. Okay na. Makakain lang ng isang beses sa isang araw. Ganun dati yung buhay dito, di ba? Hanggang sa naging okay, nakakakain na ng tatlong beses sa isang araw. Hanggang sa ito, nakikita natin, ang dami ng matataas na bahay. Marami na may mga trabaho, marami na mga, may mga kotse. Halos lahat, naka-fiber na. Ay, hindi naman halos lahat. Marami na naka-fiber. 
Pero, paano kung nasa isang church ka, naglilingkod ka bilang isang pastor missionary sa isang church and yung mga members mo, walang kakayahan na mag-offering? Kasi, ang kaya nilang gawin ay yung, yung pinagtrabo, pinagtraba, yung, yung sinahuran nila, sakto lang pangkain sa isang araw. Pang isang meal lang din. So, wala silang mabibigay na offering. So, saan ka kukuha ng pang ano mo, daily life mo? Pero, isipin mo, alam mo na may kakayahan ka na magtrabaho, dati kang manager ng isang call center, tapos, naisip mo gusto mong bumalik. Kasi ang hirap. Ayan yung gusto sabihin ng Diyos ngayon. Burn down the bridges. Huwag ka lang bumalik. This does not apply sa mga nag-offer ng kanyang buhay as missionaries and pastors lang. We are all called to be missionaries. Tama? Tama? Ambassadors. To reflect His glory saan man tayo. Hindi ko nagagawa, nahihirapan ako, babalik ako. Babalik ako sa mga kaibigan, babalik ako sa mga, sa pamilya, magpo-focus muna ako sa trabaho. Burn down the bridges. How many of us has burned down our bridges? Not one bridge. Imposible yung isa lang yung bridge ng buhay natin. Pabalik. Marami tayong nilalagay na options. Ganun tayo eh. Gusto natin safe. ba? Diba? Ayaw natin isa lang. Pa- paano pag nasira to? Dapat mayroon pang option B, option C, option D. Burn the bridge meaning tatanggalin mo na yung option mo para makabalik. Question. Bakit gusto ng Diyos? Bakit nire-require ng Diyos na maging perfect lang? Bakit wala na ibang paraan? Bakit perfect lang? Ano ba yung perfect? Ano meaning ng perfect? In other words, become, work. A- ano ba yun? Maging katulad nino. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Maging katulad nino. Katulad ni? <laughs> katulad ng Diyos. Question. Sino nakaalala sa uh, ano ulit yung sinabi ko last week na to be continued na magiging subtitle today? True? Blessing. Let's talk about bless. Ano ang uh, isa sa mga meaning ng bless? One word. Except sa mga nandito kanina umaga. <laughs> so, ano? Ano meaning ng bless? To, to jump, to stand, ano yun? To, kneel. Ibig sabihin ng you will not come to your sins ay curse, adultery, and poison. Okay, let's talk about blessing para mapunta tayo dyan. Bless, in other words, kneel. Ano ibig sabihin ng kneel? Surrendered mo na lahat. Tama? Siya na yung may-ari. Ina-acknowledge mo, siya na yung may-ari na lahat na meron ka. Same sa empty. Para maabot mo yung nil, kailangan may empty ka. Kahit almost the same yung meaning nun. Ma-realize mo na valueless ka, ma-realize mo na uh, unreal ka, then you're empty, and that's the way 
na makakapag ka. Uh, yung yung nil hindi lang bless. No, no, no. Yung bless, may iba pang meaning, hindi lang bless. Naalala nyo yung isa pang meaning ng bless? Kabaliktaran ng bless? Kabaliktaran ng bless? Alin kaya dito? Alin kaya dito? Curse. Bakit curse? Kabaliktaran ng nil, pag tumayo ka, then you're cursed. Gusto ng Diyos na mag ka, then you will be blessed. Actually, blessed are those are the ones na naka -kneel. Ang blessing, hindi yung mga meron tayo, yung mga nakukuha natin, yung mga natatanggap natin mula sa Diyos. Ang blessing, ang definition ng blessing ng Diyos ay ikaw na naka sa harapan niya. Yung medyo similar ng Neil is humble. Uh, humble yung, ano meaning ng humble? Stand in front of God. Actually, yung mas ano pa doon is last week, pure. Ano yung pure? Without admixture. Walang halo. Puro. May dalawang example ginamit si Pastor last week uh, tungkol sa pure. Actually, nung nakaraan din, di ba? Nung narinig natin yung message about pure. Ano yung dalawang example na yun? Yung isa sa location. Yung isa, color. Locationally, tama ba yung pwesto mo? Ikaw pa rin ba yung may-ari ng lahat na meron ka or are you standing in front of God at sinasabi mo, hindi ako yung may-ari, ikaw. When you stand in front of God, makikita mo sino? Both. Makikita mo ang Diyos. And then you will see yourself. Again, six lights. Di ba? The more na expose ka sa light, the more na makikita mo yung sarili mo. So when you stand in front of God, makikita, hindi mo lang makikita ang Diyos, makikita mo yung sarili mo. Kanina yung first uh, service during praise and worship, yun yung, yun yung sinabi ko. Bakit ayaw, bakit mahirap magkaroon ng changes sa buhay? Bakit mahirap maging perfect? Marami, marami pwedeng sabihin kasi hindi ka, uh, hindi ka nag, lumalapit sa Diyos, uh, hindi ka pa, ano, hindi mo pa alam kung gano'ng kakadumi. Pero para sa akin, ito, ayaw mo lang lumapit sa Diyos. Bakit? Ito lang yung na-realize ko kagabi hanggang kaninang madaling araw. Bakit ayaw mo lumapit sa Diyos? Kasi ayaw mo makita na madumi ka. And yung example ko kanina umaga is, Maraming ayaw magpa-check up sa doktor. Ayaw, mar marami ayaw pumunta sa ospital kasi natatakot silang malala na yung sakit niya. So ayaw mo talagang pumunta sa doktor dahil natatakot kang malala na yung sakit mo at mamamatay ka na. Ayaw mong magpa-check up na lang agad para kahit papano may, may pag-asa pa, may paraan pa. Bakit? Walang, ano, bakit mahirap mag-perfect? Hindi lang basta ayaw mong lumapit sa Diyos. Hindi lang yung kung ano-ano mga dahilan. Ayaw mo lang lumapit sa Diyos. Kasi natatakot kang makita mo yung pinakamababang ikaw. Pinakamaduming ikaw. Pinakamasamang ikaw. But when you stand in front of God... Talagang ginusto mo, gusto mong makilala ang Diyos dahil pag nakilala mo ang Diyos, makikilala mo ang sarili mo. When you stand in front of God, malalaman mo kung sino ka and then malalaman mo na yun yung pwesto mo talaga. Hindi yung ikaw yung may-ari ng oras mo, hindi yung ikaw yung may-ari ng pera mo, ng lakas mo, ng knowledge mo, ng emotions mo, kundi alam mo na ang Diyos ang may-ari ng lahat ng yon, And then you will kneel. 
Kasi alam mo na na siya yung may-ari. Malalaman mo, ah, unreal pala to. Akala ko ako yung may-ari, hindi pala. Akala ko itong emotions ko, totoo to. Ako to, hindi pala. Akala ko mahalaga tong pera, akala ko mahalaga tong oras ko, yung buhay ko, yung lakas ko, yung emotion ko, yung nararamdaman ko, yung isip ko, yung knowledge ko, yung experience ko, pero valueless pala. Then, empty. And then you will be able to kneel. That's blessing. Yun yung definition ng blessing ng Diyos na gusto niya na matanggap natin. Hindi yung mga ibibigay niya sa atin na, oh, naging mabait, mabuti kang bata ngayon. Ayan, darating si Santa, bibigyan ka ng, ano, ng mga regalo. Hindi ganun ang Diyos. And hindi yun yung pinaka-purpose ng Diyos ng blessing. Hindi rin tayo dapat mag-expect doon kaya tayo susunod sa Kanya, magninil at haharap sa Diyos. Eh, hindi yun. Ano yung heart ng Ama? Ano yung heart ng Ama? Maging tapat tayo sa Kanya. Pabalikan natin to. Bago tayo bumalik dito. Did Father know His Son is in difficulty? Alam ng Diyos na mahihirapan tayo. Bakit niya tayo hinayaan? Bakit pa siya naghintay na mag-come to our sins tayo? Kasi ayaw na niya na bumalik pa tayo doon. Pag may pera ka, at alam mong sa'yo yun, akala mo sa'yo yun, doon ka naaasa. Kung mayaman ka, kung nasa iyo lahat ng kapangyarihan. Recently, ang dami kong mga namit na mga tao, iba't ibang klaseng tao. Ang dami kong natutunan tungo sa Pilipinas na hindi nalalaman na marami kasi hindi pwedeng malaman na media. Ang dami kong nalaman yung karumihan. Akala natin, Matuwid si ganito, maayos si ganito. Pero ang dami nilang koneksyon. Ang dami kong na-meet na mga anak, pamangkin, pinsan, ng mga, pag, sinab- pag binanggit ko yung pangalan, kilala nyo kung sino yun. Actually, I mean, kung sino yung taong yun. Yung mga anak, yung, yung pinsan, yung mga pamangkin, hindi nyo kilala yun. Pero itong tao kilala nyo. Nalaman ko gaano ka dumi, gaano ka corrupted. Yun yung magnyayari sa buhay natin kung marami rin tayong pera, marami tayong may kapangyarihan tayo. And ayaw ng Diyos na bumalik pa tayo doon. Ayaw ng Diyos na isipin mo sa iyo yung oras. Ayaw ng Diyos na isipin mo na sa iyo lahat ng me- kung anong meron ka ngayon. Gusto niya mawala lahat yun sa iyo. Isipin mo, siya lang yung source ng buhay mo. Kaya gusto niya ma-burn the bridge ka. Kaya gusto niya mag-come to his sense ka muna para malaman mo, ah, wala pala. Nalaman nung sec- ng, ng prodigal son, hindi pala akin to. Yung ama ko pala yung nagbigay sa akin nito, kaya ko nagamit kasi binigay niya sa akin, Pag naubos na pala to, wala pala akong kakayahan na mabuhay. Kailangan ko pala bumalik sa aking ama dahil siya lang yung makakapagbigay ng buhay sa akin, makakapag-sustain ng buhay ko. Yun yung gusto ng ama. Although, alam ng ama na mahihirapan siya at alam niya, masakit sa puso ng ama. Sa tingin niyo ba, hindi masakit sa puso ng isang ama na makita niya yung anak niya na nahihirapan. Masakit, di ba? Kahit naman, kahit kayo. Yung mga minamahal nyo sa, sa buhay, kung alam nyo, mahihirapan sila sa gagawin nila. Pero wala kayong magawa kasi ang tikas ng ulo nila. Ano mararamdaman nyo? May inis lang ba? Galit lang ba? Hindi. Mahal mo sila eh. Pamilya mo eh. Ano mararamdaman mo? Sakit. Alam kong madadapa siya. Alam kong masusugatan siya. Alam kong mahihirapan siya. Pero wala akong magawa kasi ang tigas ng ulo niya. Ang sakit. Wala akong magawa. Pero medyo iba yung situation na to. Alam ng Diyos na mahihirapan, na, mahihirapan tayo. 
So, masakit sa puso niya na kailangan pa natin dumaan sa hirap, pero yung hirap na yun will lead to being faithful sa Diyos, sa Ama. Bakit? Malalaman natin, yun lang yung paraan na malaman natin na mag-come to our sense na hindi pala ako yung may-ari, sa lang pala yung source ng buhay ko. Wait. Uh, hindi ko may explain to. Let's laktawan na natin. Hosea 2.5 Si Hosea and si Gomer. Alam niyo naman yung kwento na to, di ba? Si Gomer, yung sinabi ng Diyos na gawin mong asawa mo kay Hosea. Hosea, sinabihan ng Diyos na si Gomer, kunin mo as your wife. Itong si Gomer, akala niya, ayan yung sabi. Sa verse 5, she said, I will go after my lovers who give me my food and my water, my wool, my linen, my olive oil, and my drink. Akala ni Gomer, akala natin, eto yung nagsusustain sa buhay natin. Yung trabaho yung nagsusustain sa buhay natin. Yung pride ko, yung nagli, nag, nagbibigay ng position ko, yung emotion ko, yung nagbibigay ng takot sa mga tao para hindi nila ako kalabanin. Ako. Pero ano sabi sa verse 8? She has not acknowledged that I was the one who gave what she has. Akala natin tayo lahat. Lahat ng oras, lahat ng lakas, lahat, lahat ng anumang meron tayo ngayon, akala natin tayo yun. Akala natin tayo yung may gawa. Akala natin galing sa magulang natin. Hindi natin na-realize galing pala sa Diyos. Kung hindi mangyayari to, imposibleng maging tapat tayo sa Diyos. Isa lang yung pwede mangyari dyan. Bumalik ka sa dating option. Kasi nandun pa yung bridge. Bakit hinayaan ng ama yung kanyang anak? Although alam niya na mahihirapan yung kanyang anak. Kasi gusto niya na yung anak niya na mag-come to his sense at malaman niya hindi sa kanya galing ang lahat ng pagkain niya, lahat ng damit niya, kundi I was the one. Ma-realize niya by, com by coming into his sense, ma-realize niya na ako yung source ng buhay niya. Ano ibig sabihin doon sa ibang salita? Ako yung may-ari ng lahat. Hindi ikaw. Mali yung iniisip mo. Come to your sense. Come on. Come to your sense. Burn the bridge. Enough na yung pagbalik mo sa kung anumang akala mo na nagsusustain sa buhay mo. Sunugin mo na. Binigay ko na sa'yo yung mamanahin mo. Bakit? Hindi para maging masaya ka. No. Para malaman mo, pag naubos yon, malaman mo, ako nagbigay niyan. Dahil, dahil kapag hindi nangyari yon, then curse yon. Uh, ulit, sinabi ko kanina, may dalawang meaning uh, ng bless. Actually, marami. Pero, dalawang mahalaga, bless. Yung definition ng blessing, may bless, may curse. If you kneel, then you will be blessed. Actually, you are blessed. And you will be blessed pa. Ito, uh, ano tawag to? Bonus na lang to. Yung, yung magkaroon ng magandang trabaho, yung maging okay yung pamilya mo, yung walang magkakasakit. Ano lang din naman to eh. Sa standards ng tao, sa paningin lang ng tao na blessing yun. Pero, 
Yung mga bagay na yun, bonus na lang yun. If natanggap natin yung totoong blessing, which is kneel in front of God, ano yun? In-acknowledge mo, siya yung may-ari ng lahat na meron ka. But if not, ibig sabihin nun, nakatayo ka. Ano ibig sabihin na nakatayo ka? Ikaw yung may-ari. Marami beses din nabanggit sa preaching na ang mayaman hindi makakapasok sa kaharian ng Diyos. Naalala nyo ba? Bakit hindi makakapasok? Mas, mahi, mas madali pang makadaan sa butas ng karayom yung, yung camel. Bakit mahirap makapasok sa kaharian ng Diyos ang mayaman? Dahil mayaman? Hindi, di ba? Sino nakaalala? Dahil? Siya yung may-ari nung kayamanan na yon. Yung mayaman, ang ibig sabihin ng mayaman, hindi basta masagana. Maraming pera, malaking bahay, maraming kotse, hindi yon. Ang mayaman na sinasabi doon ay kung ikaw yung may-ari, akala mo ikaw yung may-ari na lahat ng anumang meron ka, yun yung mayaman. Yun yung definition ng mayaman para sa Diyos. Kaya mahirap pumasok sa karya ng Diyos. Bakit? Ikaw may-ari eh. Akala mo, ikaw, yung, ikaw lahat eh. Ikaw bida eh. When God sustained our life, Siya yung nagbigay ng pang-sustain ng buhay natin. So, if you are standing, kung hindi ka naka-kneel, standing ka, then that's curse. Curse yun. Yung buhay mo na yun, curse yun. Actually, poison yun. Hindi yung pag wala kang ginagawa, zero. Actually, pag nasa neutral ka, di ba? Wala kang, wala kang kawalan. Wala, walang nadagdag sa'yo, pero at the same time, wala ka rin kawalan. Wala, walang nawala sa'yo. So, neutral ka lang. Hindi ka tumaba, hindi ka pumayat. Hmm? Hmm? Ganun lang. Fit pa rin. Pero, kapag hindi ka nag-come to your sense, kapag hindi mo na-burn yung bridge, ibig sabihin nun, poison ka. So, dalawa lang yung option. It's either, cursed and poison ka, mamamatay ka, or, blessed ka. Walang neutral, walang zero, walang gitna. Either, poisonous, cursed, or blessed. Yung adultery, alam ko napansin nyo kanina nung ginaganoon ko yung slides. Yung umbilical cord, di ba? Kahit, alam ko naalala nyo yun, 0.00001, kahit 0.0001 na hindi ka nakakonect, then, adulterer ka. Akala natin yung adulterer, yung talagang nil- nilayuan mo ang Diyos. Hindi. Kahit 99.5 99999% tapat ka sa Diyos kung may 0.00001% na hindi then adulterer ka. 'Di ba? Nalala niyo yung ano na yun? So, anong ibig sabihin noon? Again, walang gitna, walang neutral. Either cursed, adulterer ka, poison itself ka or blessed ka. Ito lang yung gusto kong sabihin. Tapos na yun eh. Yan na yun eh. Um, ito yung heart ng ama. Hindi niya gustong, hindi siya natutuwa kapag nahihirapan tayo. Hindi siya sadista. Ah, natut- na nahihirapan siya. Oh, tingnan mo nga. Oh, hindi siya ganun. Hindi siya masaya pag lumalayo ka sa kanya. Nasasaktan siya kapag nakikita niyang ikaw yung may-ari ng buhay mo. Nasasaktan siya. Nasasaktan siya. Hindi yung, hindi siya, nasa, hindi yung ano ha, nasasaktan siya dahil minumura mo siya. Nasasaktan siya dahil lumalayo ka sa kanya. Nasasaktan siya dahil dinideny mo siya sa harapan ng mga kaibigan mo, sa mga non-Christians na kakilala mo. Hindi, hindi yun. Nasasaktan siya kapag i- akala mo ikaw yung may-ari ng lahat. Sa'yo nang galing. 
Ako nag-aral. Ako yung naging matalino. Dahil nag-aral ako, dahil naging masipag ako. Tapos dahil nakatapos ako ng maayos, ng mataas na may uh, grade or cum laude or ano man yun, nakapasok ako sa magandang trabaho. Ako lahat to. Dahil nakapasok ako sa magandang trabaho, mataas sahod ko, malaki sahod ko. Dahil malaki sahod ko, ako nagtrabaho nito, malaki sahod ko, ako yung nakakatulong sa bahay. Ako yung nakakapagbigay ng support. Nakakatulong pa ako sa mga kapitbahay. Nakakapagbigay pa ako ng offering na malaki. It's all you. Ikaw lahat. At doon nasasakta ng Diyos. Bakit hindi mo nalalaman na ako nagbigay niyan? Bakit hindi mo nalalaman na ako nagbigay niyan? Bakit akala mo ikaw yan? Bakit akala mo sila nagbigay niyan? Bakit akala mo yung magulang mo nagbigay sa'yo niyan? Ako nagbigay niya. Ako lang yung source ng buhay mo. Balik ka na sa akin. Kaninang first service, sinabi rin to eh. Hindi sinasabi ng Diyos, nalalapit ako sa'yo. Laging sinasabi ng Diyos, lumapit ka sa akin. Bakit? Lumapit na ang Diyos sa atin. Maraming beses na. And finally, Paano siya lumapit? Through His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, sa pamitan ng Kanyang buhay, lumapit na siya sa atin. Ngayon, ang hinihingi na lang, lang lumapit kayo sa akin kasi ako lang yung source ng buhay mo. Lumapit ka sa akin kasi kung hindi, mamamatay ka dyan. Ang kakainin mo yung pagkain ng baboy. So please, burn the bridge. Huwag ka nang bumalik. Come to your sins. Malaman mo that I am the only source of your life. Wag mong hayaan na patuloy na masakta ng ama. He wants us to be perfect. Bakit ano ba yung perfect? Ano ba yung perfect? Nil, empty, burn the bridge. Come to your sins. In one word. Ano yun? Acknowledge. Acknowledge na ano? That you are the owner. You are curious. Owner of everything. Actually, pinakamahalaga, owner of my life. And who can sustain my life from now till eternity? Uh, yun lang, yun, yun lang. Hindi ko na maalala kung meron pa ako na miss. Pero yun lang. Uh, actually, after ko, oh, sino, sino pala na mauna? Come. Angge, meron, wala, jo, wala na yun. Lakbayan. Ay, sino ba una? Lakbayan muna. Well, ayun, thank you. Uh, nabanggit na rin naman ni Kuya yung story about sa prodigal son. Dagdag ko lang is natamaan ako kaninang umaga sa message ni Pastor kasi sinabi doon, ano ba yung nasa heart ng ama ngayon? Ano ba yung meron siya nararandaman ngayon? And sinasabi ng message kaninang umaga na kung ikaw yung tatay na mayaman, meron kang lahat. At gustong-gusto mong ibigay sa anak mo yon. Pero yung anak mo nakita mo, pag binigay mo yon, anong mangyari? Pwede siyang masira. Pwede siyang ikapahamak niyo yung bagay na yon. And yung nakita ko yon, na-realize ko na may mga tao talaga na lumalapit lang sa Diyos para humini ng blessing. Inihingi nila yung blessing. Okay, una, ah, na-bless ako. Okay, masaya ako. Katagalan, Father, na-bless naman ako. Hanggang katagalan ng katagalan na na-realize nila na napakalayo na nila sa Diyos. Bakit? Tulad na sinabi ng message. Nakita nila na, ah, kayo, kaya pala ako naging blessed kasi ginawa ko itong bagay na to By my own strength. And ayun yung sasabi ng message na kailangan natin bumalik sa sense natin. Bakit? Kasi 
kung hindi tayo babalik sa sense natin, akalain lang natin na, natin na ah, kaya kong mabuhay. Kaya kong mabuhay sa pamagitan ko lang. And, nakita ko rin na kung bakit hindi binigay ng Diyos o hindi binibigay ng Diyos, sabi nga, mayaman yung ama. Lahat meron siya. Gusto niyang ibigay. Bakit hindi niya pa mabigay? Kasi alam niya masira yung anak niya. And, Hindi ko masabi ng direct pero eto yung gusto ko sabihin na gusto ng Diyos na yung relasyon natin sa Kanya is huwag masira. Bakit? Dahil sa mga blessing na pwede natin matanggap ay yung maging dahilan para malayo tayo sa Diyos. Gusto ng Diyos na mahalin natin siya the way na minamahal niya tayo. And ayun yung nakita ko kanina na bakit ba pinipilit ng Diyos na bumalik ka sa sense mo kailangan mo magising na hindi ikaw yung may kakayahan na mamatay ka kung wala ka wala ka sa akin and na-realize ko na na kung mangyari na lakap depende lang ako sa strength ko masisira yung ko sa Diyos and sa message na gusto ko lang din emphasize paano ba mangyayari sa atin yun? sinabi na kailangan mo magcome to in sense kailangan mo bumalik sa sense mo paano ba mangyayari yun? lagi natin sinasabi sa atin na pastor ano yun? pumasok ka sa room kasi once na nakikita mo yung sarili mo na, ah, makasalanan pala ako. Ah, patay pala ako. And then doon ka magsisimula na dumepende sa Diyos. Doon ka magsisimula na depende mo yung buhay mo para sa Kanya. And ayun yung matatawag na blessing. Sabi nga yung ano yung ibig sabihin ng blessing, kneel down. Ayun yung tatawag ng Diyos na bless ka once na nakikita mo yung sarili mo na patay ka talaga sa harapan ng Diyos at mag down ka. And kaya yung encourage na kung paano ko na-receive yung message kaninang umaga na kailangan natin mag-pray. Kailangan natin pumasok sa room, ma-encounter yung Diyos kasi walang mangyayari sa atin. Magdidepende pa rin tayo sa kung ano yung meron sa atin. Makakita natin sa sarili natin pa ulit-ulit hanggang di natin na-encounter yung Diyos. Ako yung may kakayahan. Kaya ko pa mabuhay. Kaya ko pa mabuhay. Pero kung nandun ka na sa reality na nakita mo na yung Diyos, na nakatulad na nangyari kay Apostol Pablo na siya yung pinaka-worst sa lahat ng sinner. And, ayun yung gusto ko yung dagdag na Good morning. Kumusta? Long time no see. I miss you. Did you see my tears? In the no reflect. Patay ka lahat. In the ito lang. Uh, I want to start with the question. Father knows the hardship of son. Tama po. Exercise mo, exercise. Tama. Why father didn't go to son? When you have a hard time, your parents will come, diba? will help. Until he come to his sense. Father is awaited. Pocket. Father allowed it. Father, just think about, ah, ikaw, di ba? You left, okay. Uh, I will ju- just o- watch over you. Canon? And then, tears, pain here. But he doesn't want help. He doesn't. Intentionally. Why? If the come to his sense, Uh, only I will go to Father, then I could sustain my life. There is no other way. Only one way. We call it lifeline. Sabi mo, lifeline. Only one way, come to the Father, you will be alive. 
If they will, other way, wala. Tama. So, as wrong is, what I actually try to put some uh, more slide. Diba? The rock climbing, tama? There is only one, tali, tama? Putol, what will happen? Yun lang. That's why also other matter, umbilical cord. Tama? Only one source lang. That's what we call it. When you know, if I will not go to Father, oh, I have no ability to make me alive. That's actually come to his sense. Okay? Then, other case. If the prodigal son, he come back to the father before come to his sense. He has his own ability to live by himself. Okay? So, father will give him and as long as he, he will also go back to his own. Burn the bridge. Meaning, I cannot go back because if I go back, what will happen? I will die. Tama. Just burn the bridge. So, Father wants to bless him as long as before he become, come to his sense, he will go back. Father will give him much give. Then, then he become more pride. That was, he will go away from. So, Father not only lost his property, also he was lie. Tama. That's why giving him is not helping him. What? Destroy him. Tama. That's why it's not blessing. So this morning I, I talk about the tree of knowing good and evil. Last week what we studied, the Genesis and Revelation is symmetry, right? So, in Genesis, there is a tree of life, chaka, tree of knowing good and evil, tama. In Revelation, there is tree of uh, life, Neron, Buksan, the way it was open. Then also, there is none, no what? Tree of knowing good and evil. Even if in that time, God will put the tree of knowing and good and evil, and then God will say, oh, you can eat now. But people say what? I know, I will not. Because if I will eat, I know it, it will be eternal separation. I will die. So why I will eat? But I'm going to tell you why. Probation is over. Tama. No need to uh, worry about uh, father's heart. He wants to bless you. Okay? Then, why we cannot bless? Because as much as father will bless you, you will become more proud, then you will go away more father. That's what happened to prodigal son. Then how? Father will, father can live with the, his son only one way. Father has no problem. Son have to be different. Tama. If father, uh, the, the son will not be changed, no way. Father is stay his place, right? Son is the one will go and then come back. But if son will not understand. Oh, only if I will stay with father, I can live. If I go away, I will die. If son didn't understand it, of course, son will look for his own way. That's why kneel, meaning, I have no source. Meaning, I have to depend on the father. That's the kneel. As long as, just like practical son, when you stand, meaning you have your own. That's why all the time there is fighting. If 
Your understanding, my standing, understanding is same. What do you say? Okay, no? Your understanding, my understanding is different. Why? Ah, why? Tama. Ah, why? That's why Father is all the time right. If you didn't know you are all dead, then you have your own. Ah, why? No happy. It, we call it not one. It's already two. That's why cannot be one. One thing. Oh, this morning I told you. You young ones, you will look for your partner, right? Until you trust your party will depend on you 100%. Meaning, there is no possibility to look for another party. Dama. If you know, oh, your party will look for another party, you will never marry. Dama. Dama. So as long as you know your party is depend on you 100%, then he will never look for other party. We call it also come to his sense. Because he depends on you. Also, you said, I can trust you. He also said, trust you. As long as adultery, your party has ability 0.00001% to look for other party, what we call it. That's what? Adultery. Meaning, if the relationship with God and me, we think about, oh, I will look for my own way to live, then we call it adultery. Anyway, so Father's heart is all the time, what? Wants to bless. Bless is, what we are thinking about bless is having something, what I want. That's a blessing. But before we become empty, before the son be, uh, come to his sense, as much as you will cut the material, then you will become more proud of you, then you will go away. Meaning it's not helping you. It's also curse. Why? If, as long as you become father from your father, then it's not blessing. So, uh, the, even the son, before he come to his sense, he don't want to go back. For example, you got some money from your parents, okay? And you say bye. You don't want to go back because not only your family, your whole other, the, your neighbors know. Oh, she or he left with some money of parents, right? Then, not successful, become beggar, then come back, then what they will say? Oh, that's why as long as you have pride, you don't want to go back. How, when you will you go back? You cannot live without help of your parents, right? Only that time, then you will be depend on your parent, as long as parent will not give you something, even eat, whatever, you cannot get any, anything, then you will die. When you know, ah, I cannot live by my own, that's what they call it, come to his sense. Then you, because that's only one way, that's only one way, then you go back, then what do you say? Oh, father or mother, I know now, without you, I cannot live. Tama. That's why, what we see, without you, I am nothing. But here, poison. Poison. That's what Kuya explained. Diba? Then, that's why, even the par your parents is so masaket in heart. Diba? Because they know you have hard time. Tama. Then, they don't need to help until they will surrender. If help, what do you say? As much as they have some source for themselves, they will not go back. That's why I talk to our congregation, the elders, okay, the mother and father. When your children have problem, 
Don't give anything. Stop to support them. Even schooling. Why? Helping is not helping. It's become as much as oh, I, my life is just so bad. Yet, oh, my parents will give me. There is no more correction. That's why. This morning also I told. The result proved. I said, oh, but some of them said, how come they have to finish school? I said, no. Until they will surrender, they will, so that they will listen to their parents. If not, then now, result, there is bad result. Dama. That's why the political son father waited. Why? If you will depend on me 100%, then meaning you trust me. Also, you understood without me, you cannot be survived. So, then, it doesn't, I will make you slave. It's not. Okay? Father doesn't want to lose child. That's the only one. Also, love. Also, Good fellowship. That's why, come to his sense. Also, Father also said. Then, other slide I didn't talk about, but case of Abraham. All the time, this is perfect. But what is perfect? Perfect. The, the, the prodigal son come back to the father, okay? Father will ask the second one, Bunsu, some so strange. Uh, things, okay? Can you, uh, just like a you know, test of Abraham, can you kill your son, only son, Isaac? Political son, what do you say? No or yes? No or yes? No. Yes. I don't know. Tomorrow morning I will tell you. Probation is over. Whatever father will tell him, he will say what? Yes. Because trust is only one source. So if we not become empty, then God will bless me, materials and success, whatever. What will do? Of course, firstly, what we say, thank you, Father, then. Our origin, we are dust, we are sin itself. What we say, we will become so proud. Then, what we say, we will say bye, Father. That's why, as much as God trusts you, not you are saying, I trust God. No, as much as God trusts you, God will bless you. Why? If you, God cannot trust you, God give you material, what will you do? For example, I cannot trust Kuya. Okay? If I will give him 10,000, I know how he will spend that 10,000. For good? No. For bad. I will give? I will give? In there. I will not. If I know, uh, I trust him, okay, if I will give 10,000, I know how he will spend it for good. Why not? I will, if I have money, why, why not? That's why as much as God trusts you, when you took out your portion, then you put his portion in that empty portion, okay, then God will bless you. That's why, Father, the son of uh, father of political son is so so what do you call it difficult uh, training that's also God wants so let him trust you that's the way if not God will not endorse you any blessings material whatever why he doesn't want to lose you. Okay? That's why also God said, I love you first. He come to 
us first, right? And then he loved us. When we were sinners st still, he proved he loved us. Tama. Then now, you come to me. How we can come to our senses? For example, no comparison. Okay. I and uh, bro uh, Brother Aaron, okay? We'll say, we will talk about one matter, right? If you have your own, I have my own, what we'll do? Argue. Tama, argue. Then, as long as someone will say, which we respect, which all of you respect, parang professor or famous or the famous pastor, whoever, will come. What do you say? We will ask him. We have argument. So, please correct us. Then, he's the one who will correct us. When we listen, oh, what you are thinking about post? It's male. So, what do you say? We will accept it. That's why all of us has pride, meaning what I know, what I hold on is right and good. That's why when we talk about your matter with others, all the time argue. So when we meet God, what will happen? What I am thinking about is wrong. Also, male. Also, we could imagine the result. Tama. Then, what is it? Oops. What I understood is wrong. Then, what we'll do? We will accept his. Instead, of, we will hold our own. When you see, when you meet God, only that time we will know what we have is wrong. Tama. Then, what do you say? Portion by portion, as much as when we meet God, we will know what we have is wrong, then we will lay down, we will take his portion. Okay? Then finally, what do you say? Oh, what I have all is useless. It's all poison. Then, oh, what I have, as long as I hold on it, uh, I will die. What he said, I must have it. If not, I will die. That's what we call it. Come to his sense. That's why don't make any ability to go back to the dust or dirt. So we have to be killed totally. Actually, uh, I put the, you know, the uh, what do you call it, the musician and baboy. Tama, still. So musician. Who who wants uh, who wants to be musician here? I, I want to be baboy. So anyone, musician. Okay, come come anyway. Come come come. Come come come. Musician. He wants to show himself, okay? You know, Naman, musician knows he can take out all elements of Babui, okay? Only the figure lung, okay? Then he made, I uh, know, magic. Then he made me all empty, only the, 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 the appearance lung. Then he will disappear. Then he will come in. So when you see, what you could say, musician or baboy? Baboy. But when you see baboy is moving, oh, the baboyan. Who is it? Musician. Tama. Pero he failed to move one finger lung. Only thus he couldn't remove this portion now. Others is him. But this one is what? This is what? Baboy. So this Baboy must be fully empty so that he can reflect what? 100%. Dama. God wants to reflect himself through me. So if uh, I will not make my, me empty, then if I couldn't remain maybe some portion of this hand, he cannot. Use this one. You cannot reflect whole. Then this portion will kill all actually. Because this is sin itself. It will contaminate it all. 
That's why, thank you. That's why father's heart all the time crying, all the time painful. When he, father knew that his son is suffering. Dama. Yeah, that's parents. But he have to wait until the son, prodigal son, will surrender. Only way to live is a way to go back to father. Okay? If not, he will go back and get some person all the time look for, go away. Look for the way. Go, go. Ah, okay? Or maybe this one, maybe for one week, one month. Okay, I will go back. That's, that's why father waited. The only one, only the best way. They have to surrender. No more, go back. Even some there is a temptation or whatever. Oh, I will not. I know what will happen to me. I will never. That's why this come to his sense is then when you go back. As I told you, the son will trust what? Father. So father trust him then. Whatever father will ask him to do, son will do, right? That's only what the son will do. Then the father will trust then, whatever. For example, uh, Kuya is a servant of me. If I trust him, whatever. Just like the, the, the Joseph and the Potiphar, Dama. Joseph was so trusted, right? That's why Potiphar, Dama, Potiphar is the one entrust him, then you are the one. Do everything, Dama. If the Potiphar didn't uh, the, the trust him, how? That's why let him trust you. Not small portion, much portion, no, in the, totally. So no ability to uh, uh, go away. No ability or no portion of doubt. What, uh, in every conditions, they will not deny or they will not betray me. Then, God trusts you, then God will give whatever he has. But you will consider it not yours. That's what Koya said, curious. He's the one owner, also my life, owner of my life also, because without him, I will die. Okay? So, this morning I, I told them, don't ask blessing material. Even don't think about even. What you have to do? You make him trust you. You make him trust you. How? You must meet. So that you will know you, what you have is wrong. Then you know only his is right. Then you will accept. Right? So as much as you accept, then you will uh, remove your wrong understanding or what is bad for you. Dama. Then finally you will give up. Oh, what I have, I consider it so important. Ah, you don't vale. Then you will surrender totally. Okay? Only way how to live continually is him alone. That's a practical son come to his sense. Oh, my life is depend on him, right? Then, even somebody push you to go away, you, will you go? Will you go? No, you will not. Because you know what will happen to you. One string in the rock climbing. Somebody will say, cut. You will cut? No, you will never. Because you know what will happen to you. That's why come to his sense is a matter of empty. Empty. So, I hope you have something to tell. Meron? So, that is all. Okay, let us all stand.
Father wants to bless us. There's no doubt at all. That's sure. Then we have problem actually. We don't need to look for any material blessing. Only what we have to do, Father, let me meet you. Let me meet you. I want to meet you. I want to come to you, Father. Then, Father, so that I will know I'm wrong, you are all right. Then totally bless me to surrender my everything. Oh, Father, thank you. So, I don't want to see the tears of Father. I want to make you happy. Father, let me come to you. Sorry for wrong motive. Sorry for misunderstand. Father, I now understand how much you love me. Father, bless me. Come to know you. Come to meet you. Find out more of you, Father. That's the only one I desire. Father, sorry. What I did, what I thought about, what I hold on, Father. Still, Father, I want to expose it all. Hallelujah. Then individually, we'll pray for, for some minutes, okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your children in this place. Let us shout once again, hallelujah. Father, we lay down our own, Father. That's why, Father, we focus on to you, Father. Bless us more to know you, Father, so that, Father, we will experience we have all sin matters, Father. Then, Father, we will depend on you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you for your presence. Even thank you for your word. Even, Father, Thank you for your corrections. Hallelujah. 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 Father, thank you. May the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, 
the world will become empty. He depended on to you, Father. Then you, He submit to even that on the cross, Father. The love of Father, still you love us. You never stop us. Stop to love us, Father. Even fellowship of Holy Spirit. The one who help us, encourage us, correct us, even discipline us to experience our Father's love. Be with you from now on to ever. That's why all children of God will say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. I'm so happy to see you. So, thank you and God bless you.